Okay, so now that we've defined our geometry, we can close this tab, we either by right-clicking and selecting Close, or just double-clicking this tab, and then we can launch the data acquisition um, interface. Now, the purpose of this Aros DAC software is really to manage the test process uh, that we go through when we do model testing. It in itself uh, connects through the NVGate software that controls the analyzer. But first, um, we need to uh, do several things. Uh, we can again just right click to display our node numbers. Um, now, you can see over here that we have a test planning tab and a transducer tab. Now the test planning is just to uh, plan our test sequence uh, and define which directions we're going to excite, uh, which directions we're going to, to measure. Um, and over here the transducers we're going to use. Um, so you can see um, it defaulted to our 34 analyzer but we haven't uh, switched ours on yet so that's why it hasn't picked it up yet. Um, and you will see over here on channel 1 it currently has a uh, an accelerometer, default accelerometer and channel 2 default force transducer. So now what we're going to do is we are going to use uh, a model hammer and accelerometer um, now, when we do metal testing with a hammer, we have two options. We can either excite the structure at our reference location uh, with the metal hammer and move the accelerometer or other sensor around, or an, uh, another option is to mount the accelerometer at a reference location and move the hammer around. Um, and uh, in order to do that, we, of course, are relying on the uh, reciprocity uh, principle, which is, is inherent to metal testing, uh, because in metal testing we generally assume that we have a linear structure. Now, to define our transducers, we can uh, just double-click on one of them, and transducer 1, uh, which is our default accelerometer, so let's uh, uh, define our accelerometer over here uh, so we can manually add that into that information so just call it ICC um, and our serial number of the accelerometer which in this case is 16110 manufacturer information accelerometer that's right our sensitivity in volts per G that's correct. And coupling is ICP um, uh, because it's an ICP sensor. Now we can either add this and it will define it just for the test or we can add it to the database. Now um, I've already used these sensors so I can load it from the database um, and there is my accelerometer and my transducer 2 which will be my hammer. I can also load um, which will give me uh, my hammer's characteristics. Now we can use more sensors um, and that's particularly why I prefer um, using the roving hammer approach. Um, you can, if you uh, place a triaxial accelerometer here, do a multi-input, multi-output or MEMO model test. So you have uh, uh, then a reference in three directions. Um, unfortunately, our software license uh, does not allow for a MEMO test, but only single input, multi-output tests. Um, but yes, that um, if you have that capability, especially useful on very large structures, you can distribute a number of reference sensors and move your hammer around. Now that we've defined our transducers, we also need to define where we're going to place our sense transducers on the, the analyzer. Now, uh, a, a general 
rule of thumb when using analyzers for metal testing, uh, we keep our reference sensor on channel one, so this is correct. Uh, our accelerometer and our roving sensor will be our hammer. Okay, so now to plan our test sequence, you can see it's got a default set. Um, where degree of freedom one is our uh, reference sensor, uh, defined at node one in the x direction, and degree of freedom two is our roving sensor, uh, starting at node one in direction one. Um, so we can uh, change this label if you want, but let's keep it at that. Um, we are going to measure in the positive z direction with our accelerometer, and our reference location is node 26. And our second degree of freedom, which is our roving hammer, uh, we will start at node one, uh, but we will be exciting in a negative z direction. So you can see over here, the red arrow indicates our reference location, and the yellow arrow our excitation uh, location and direction with hammer. Now to set up a sequence with this, we can just right-click on set one and say set sequence and here we can uh, find our reference degree of freedoms and that we already have done um, so we're going to click on the reference degree of freedom one um, and then our roving degree of freedom we left click on that and that we're going to keep constant we are want to increment uh, the location um, uh, by one every time on our measurement location or a, our excitation location um, up to uh, 0.26 um, uh, number per set is just one and we say batch add and you can see that uh, it created a duplicate entry here which we can just delete so we left click on that and say delete uh, we can add another one um, at node 26 uh, but we have to be careful here because our accelerometer is already on node 26 uh, and we generally do not want to um, excite uh, directly on the accelerometer so we rather excite the plate from underneath so our excitation direction for node 26 will be in a positive z direction um, and we only want to add one point so we just say add like that oh, okay so we see that um, it, it already changed uh, no 25 so let's just correct that let's say okay so now we can see all our um, lo uh, measurement locations that we will be considering uh, note set 26, um, if we click on that, uh, we can see our measurement uh, direction and acceptation direction, note 25, uh, 24, and so forth. So that's our test sequence, and we can um, select each one to make sure it is as we've defined. Now to demonstrate um, other functionalities of the software, what we're also going to do um, is add some sequences where we're going to excite the structure in the y and x direction. Um, so first let's select excitation in a plus y direction and we will excite uh, the plate at nodes 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Um, so we'll start from 1, 5 batch add. So you can see over here uh, our reference location is still the same but now we're exciting 
in the y direction for nodes 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Um, you can say OK. So that is displayed now over here. You can see that for set 31. Um, now I also want to do the same in the positive x direction for nodes 1, 6, 11, 16 and 21. Um, so we will excite in a positive z direction. We will increment now by 5. Um, batch at 5. So you can see over here, excite node 1, 6, 11, 16 and 21 in the x direction. So now that we've defined our sequence, um, very good idea is to just to press save um, uh, to save our sequence. Um, if our um, test is interrupted, uh, we do not lo lose any information and need to do this all again. So I strongly recommend that you press save after defining your test sequence. Okay, so now that our test sequence is defined, uh, we can have a look here at our parameter panel, uh, preparing now for the actual test. So uh, we've discussed the channels, um, uh, defining which sensor goes to which channel. Uh, we can, over here, via the different measurement sets uh, as well. Um, let's give that at one. Um, we can uh, define the ranges of the sensors over here, uh, but we'll play around with that just now. O2 is typically useful if you use uh, electrodynamic actuators, uh, but because we're using hammer, I'll uh, just define that manually. If we look at uh, our measurement, we can define our frequency range, start frequency, end frequency. Let's make that 2.5 kilohertz, which is um, probably an overkill uh, for the plate. Um, also a number of spectral lines. Uh, I'm going to make that maximum. Uh, and again, I mean, yes, at sample time. Um, overlap, I'm using AMR, so overlap is, uh, is should not be used. Averaging type linear is useful. Averaging number five, I'm happy with that. We know type because I'm using an impact hammer, we should use a force exponential um, uh, window type um, and then if we click on source th this is um, where we define uh, the signal that is applied to an actuator if we use the um, channel 1 output on the uh, analyzer to drive an electrodynamic actuator, but we're not going to use that. But just to show the functionality, we can drive it at the uh, using a sine wave. Um, switch it on. Sine wave, random noise, or chirp signal. Uh, but as I said, we won't use that. A trigger. That's very important, specifically if you use a hammer. Free run useful if you uh, use random excitation from uh, uh, electrodynamic actuator, but we actually want to use our input um, and our hammer is on channel two. R rising slope uh, because we have a have a positive pulse. Uh, our trigger level in percentage, and this just displays the level in, in millivolts. Um, a delay of minus one percent which means we have uh, about 20 milliseconds pre-trigger, uh, which is very useful, again, when using a hammer. 